Is regenerative the future of farming? And our conclusion, having spoken with a wide range of farmers, food businesses, NGOs, and other experts was, it needs to be. And at Footprint, our interest, I suppose, in regenerative agriculture has really peaked over the last couple of years when we've seen a rush of corporate net zero commitments that have explicitly linked a shift to regenerative farming with decarbonisation of food supply chains. The promise being that adoption of regenerative practices will sequester carbon in soils and reduce reliance on artificial inputs, as well as delivering improvements in soil health, protecting water and safeguarding biodiversity. So the purpose of today's forum is really to hear first-hand experiences of how the theory behind a shift to regenerative agriculture is translating into meaningful action at a farm level and throughout the food supply chain and how we can ensure that it delivers social and environmental benefits at scale. I think regenerative farming is about delivering net good across carbon, biodiversity, water, social, animal welfare, rather than simply being less bad. So I think if you, if you look at where we've got to in the last uh, decade, we've been just trying to be less bad. There's a hubris, isn't there, of humans at the moment that we, we think we're in control of all of this and therefore we, we're going to fix it. But nature will fix this. We have to try and, I think, be humble enough to, to know that we've got to mimic nature, still produce food, um, and, and stop trying to come up with a technological answer. And that it's going to be a journey. We will never know when we finished. But if each time we look, it's slightly better, rather than just being less bad, that's the journey. We're not quite sure whether we have opportunities or challenges facing us. And um, as we've seen other countries around Europe making similar policy moves in, in terms of trying to allow agriculture to deliver not just food but also some of these um, public goods, the green goods, the, 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 the carbon uh, uh, sequestration, then, then I, think, um, I think if we don't grasp this with both hands, I think we're going to miss a great opportunity. And one of our proposals was that uh, when farmers do get their soils tested for phosphates, potash, magnesium, all those other things we test for, that there should be uh, an attempt to try and assess carbon in soils because you know, carbon sequestration in soils has surely got to be part of the solution and most of us haven't a clue how much carbon's in our soils. I, I did a couple of tests on, on a couple of bits of land that had not been really farmed for 20 years. One had nearly 10% carbon, the other had 2%. Don't ask me why. I think Sir Robert said earlier on, it's, we're not doing it to farmers, we're doing it with farmers as well. We currently do not use regenerative agriculture as a term within our organisation and we don't have a commitment against it. That's not because it's not important to us, it's just that it's a trending term and we just feel, and it goes back to why we were on this panel, just feels that it's not fair on the um, farming community or our consumers to have something in place when actually it's not been fully defined. I'd just like to say on the other things, we can all get a bit depressed in the UK saying well, no one appreciates what we do and everything else because we do have the highest food standards in the world and we're far ahead of some of the other region. Um, I think that basically as a farmer you want to be rewarded for what you're doing. Um, we as farmers are being asked to make tremendous changes we're starting right now. Some of us have already been doing that in anticipation of this. And in order to be rewarded, we need the marketplace to be able to recognise what we're doing compared to other farmers. Um, and at the moment, um, that's very, very hard. One of our customers we've got a five-year contract with, which allows us to work on long-term projects. And with our, our export customers increasingly, we're saying to them, you know, we're looking, you know, the investment we're making on farm and throughout the whole process, we're investing together. And um, I think the whole of the food chain needs a longer-term approach. We're talking about nature here. We have to fundamentally change financially how we think about uh, about this and again this is this is a cultural change. I do believe that we need to measure 
sustainability from the ground up, farm by farm, that came up in the first panel. And if you, if you disconnect the measurement from the farm up, uh, from the labelling of the foods, then you've lost the trust. And I just, I would like to say that from the first panel, I think, uh, Robin, you know, you, you, what you're doing to support First Milk is a brilliant exemplar of the way forward. This should be about, it should be a relational rather than a transactional process, building understanding of what, what the farms need and every farm is different. What we've got to be careful of is that as businesses say, if we can't talk about it and we're going to get shot down when we do, then we're going to stop doing it. And we've got to be really careful. So greenwashing, yes, it happens, but we've got to be careful that when businesses are, are accused of it, they're accused of it in the right way, if that makes sense, because the opposite is going to happen. Businesses just won't do it, just won't get behind this.